Hey everyone, welcome to Wrestling Connection. I'm Johnny D, the Redeemer, your host. Uh, I'm sorry this video is kind of late. Uh, I've been real busy with school. Uh, it's coming up to the end of the semester, so I've just been uh, really hard working on that. But I promise you guys to get these videos out, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So uh, here's my review of Raw from Monday. Let's get right into it. John Cena opened up the show uh, with another U.S. Championship uh, open challenge. Um, they were in the United Kingdom this week, so who else to come out than uh, Bad News Barrett? Um, they had a, a decent match, um, nothing too great, nothing to really um, speak about. But they, you know, you, you see that they still had that um, chemistry that they had before. Um, it was it was a good match. Um, John Cena picked up the win. Um, he hit that springboard stunner again, and. Um, then did the FU, uh, attitude adjustment, sorry. I kind of, you know, take it back a few years every now and again. Um, but, um, yeah, nothing to really speak about. I wish you wouldn't do this, I said this before too, I wish Cena wouldn't do the springboard stunner so often, but um, that seems like that's going to be his new uh, move in his uh, repertoire. He's like, John, I swear, John Cena's like a Pokemon. He learns a new move and, you know, he forgets another one. He he only knows like <laughs> five moves and that's it. Um, then we had the Divas Battle Royal for the number one contendership for the uh, Divas title. Um, nothing really big to speak about about the Battle Royal itself. Um, I said before I, you know, I'm not a big fan of Battle Royals. Um, but the big thing to take away from the match was page one. She got the number one contendership. Um, but Naomi, um, who was a face, um, got frustrated and attacked Paige, um, officially turning her heel, which I thought was interesting for two reasons. One, um, she was doing good as a, as a good guy, well, good girl, whatever you want to, um, but then the Usos, she was with the Usos for a while here, she was coming out with them, and they're a face tag team. I wonder how that's going to work with her turning heel and them still being baby faces. Um, but with this unfolding, I think what we're going to see is a triple threat match for the Divas title at the upcoming sh uh, yeah, Shroom Rules pay-per-view. Um, then we have Lucha Dragons versus the Ascension. Um, another great match um, on both parts, too. Um, you know, the Lucha Dragons really outshined, and, you know, the, the Ascension were good, too. Um, the, Lucha, the Lucha Dragons did get the win. Um, I didn't agree with this booking, personally, because um, I get that they're trying to build the Lucha Dragons up, and I think they're going to be in the running for the tag titles here pretty soon. But the I think the Ascension should be more formidable, and for them to be losing the way they are, um, especially to, I mean, theoretically, two smaller guys like the Lucha Dragons, it, it doesn't look good for the Ascension. I wish um, maybe they would have put the Lucha Dragons up against somebody else, but what can you do? It was still a good match, still entertaining to watch. Um, then we had uh, Roman Reigns' promo. Uh, Reigns came out and was talking about how the Big Show cost him the chance to be in the running for the WWE Championship. Um, this prompted Big Show to show up on the Titan Tron and um, kind of talk smack to Roman Reigns, but, um, Roman Reigns said, oh, you know, you're scared to, to be here in person and talk to me and tell me these things, and as Reigns is going to leave, Big Show actually surprises and shows him and attacks Roman Reigns on the, uh, the ramp way, and, um, you know, when they go to the UK, they have the whole British setup thing, and they had a, you know, a taxi cab there, and Big Show choke slammed um, Roman Reigns on top of the taxi, which I thought was really cool. Um, and with this, I'm actually kind of getting into this rivalry now, because they're actually building Big Show up some. Um, I was saying that Big Show needed something coming off of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal win. And, um, I'd actually like to see Big Show win at Extreme Rules, and then have him kind of carry it to maybe the next pay-per-view and have Reigns win there. I think that, that could get, that could benefit Big Show giving him the first win. Um, Randy Orton had a match against Cesaro, 
um, which ended in disqualification when Tyson Kidd interfered. Um, this caused the match to become a, um, a handicap match between Orton and then Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Um, a decent match, nothing too great. Um, you know, Orton and Cesaro do have chemistry, like they showed before, back when Cesaro was actually getting a really big push before he fell off. Um, but nothing really great to speak about. Um, again, I don't think Orton's opponent should have been uh, Kid Cesaro because they're the tag team champions. Um, and they should be held in this higher esteem and not just getting knocked off relatively easily by Randy Orton. Um, and people wonder why the titles aren't held in such uh, prestige anymore like they used to be. I mean, back in the day, you didn't have, you know, Demolition or the Road Warriors, you know, you know, falling in, you know, handicap matches to Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair. Um, and I think it's kind of what we have now is, you know, the champion will take out anybody. And um, the uh, besides the heavyweight championship, all the other championships aren't as seen as as highly, they aren't seen as prestigious, and it's because the people that hold them aren't held in those high regards like they used to be. Um, and that was a perfect example with what we saw on Monday. Um, Adam Rose had a match with Dean Ambrose, who returned for the first time after missing for a week, uh, after he got attacked by Luke Harper um, two weeks ago. Yeah, it'd be two weeks ago now. Um, he was gone, he wasn't seen. Um, he returned on Monday, he had a match with Adam Rose, which, you know, wasn't anything, excuse me, sorry, uh, wasn't anything great. Um, Ambrose won relatively quickly and easily and didn't do much for Ambrose. Um, I think they shouldn't even have had this match. Um, I think it just should have uh, held on to him. And you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, after this, Fandango had a match with Stardust. Um, again, another quick, you know, match, nothing to really speak of. Uh, Cody won with the, um, disaster, I mean, sorry, Stardust won with the, uh, beautiful disaster kick. Um, the only thing to really note was after, um, Fandango broke up with Rosa Mendez and, uh, apparently dropped the dark gimmick and went back to the, uh, regular Fandango, you know, the 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 you know. Um, so I guess he's taking a face turn again. Um, and it, it was, it was an interesting match. It's nice to still have matches that aren't involved in storylines, um, that are just kind of putting two competitors together. You know, that kind of, I think that kind of goes back to an old school booking style. Uh, a lot of people thought it seemed out of place, but I thought it was nice. It gave you kind of a break but from all the drama and gave you just an actual in-ring, you know, about. Uh, Kane and Seth Rollins had a match. Um, this is actually um, really interesting to see. Um, Rollins was telling Kane to just lay down for him. Um, and Kane wasn't having that. Um, he got pretty much pissed off, you know, hit him with his, with his uppercut, um, took Seth Rollins, and then hit him with the choke slam. Um, and Rollins was out. But instead of uh, pinning him. He laid down and pulled Rollins over him, giving him the one, two, three. Um, I was excited to see, you know, Kane's kind of, you know, he's kind of going back to, oh, Kane, Kane, you know, Demon Kane, as I like to call it. And, but then he stopped. And I just, I didn't, I didn't like that. I wish he would have went through with it. Um, I, you know, it's obvious that they're going to go back and bring back Masked Kane or Demon Kane or whatever. Um, but I wish that they would kind of give a reason why Kane's acting the way he was. Why he went with the authority, why he won't, you know, outright leave the authority yet. I think they should bring up some kind of storyline of the authority has something over Kane, and that's why he's acting the way he is. Um, and then, and it could be Daniel Bryan, because before the match with uh, Rollins, uh, Daniel Bryan was like, oh, you need to find that inner demon again. Um, it, Maybe have Daniel Bryan, or, or it could be anybody, help Kane find find his way again, um, and find help him find a way to best the authority. Um, 
maybe even have them in a match against Triple H. Um, we we know that they can go. Um, that'd be kind of interesting to see, even if we draw it out to maybe SummerSlam. Um, I think that could be a pretty cool, um, relatively high-profile match for both wrestlers. Um, and we had Mizdow versus Miz again. Um, I don't know why they did this. Um, I think it, you know, the weeks prior they really, you know, really built up going into the pay-per-view, and now they had a match on Raw, and Mizdow won relatively easily. Um, and I mean, he pretty much already got his retribution for everything that Miz did to him. And this didn't make sense to me at all. Um, this really took away so much that they built up. I don't know why. I don't know what their plans are. Maybe we'll see, you know, tonight on SmackDown or next Monday, what exactly they're going to do with these two. Um, as of right now, it, they almost took away any reason for us to want to see... Um, their match at the pay-per-view. Then we had Ryback versus Luke Harper. Um, this match was okay. Um, it didn't last too long. Luke Harper um, hit uh, Ryback with the, I think it's the covering of the table, and ending the match in disqualification. Um, and that was kind of cool that they kind of, you know, made that callback to what happened to Dean Ambrose. Um, this actually prompted after the match ended to have. Dean Ambrose come out and try to attack Luke Harper, but uh, Luke Harper got away. Uh, I definitely think that they're going to have a match at, I mean, obviously they're going to have a match at Extreme Rules, but I definitely think it's going to be a table match, especially with the little callback they did you know, on Monday with Ryback getting hit with the table. Um, Dolph Ziggler and Neville had a match. An amazing match. Definitely the highlight of Raw. Um, they went back and forth, um, Endlessly, they definitely have wonderful chemistry. Um, I would love to see them in a high-profile match here later on. Maybe um, eventually Ziggler will get the uh, IC belt here, and Neville will go for it because they could definitely have some great matches. I'd love to see them in a ladder match together. That could be amazing. Um, uh, Ziggler did get the win. Um, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, Neville's been losing their." You know, they're bearing another NXT superstar, but I, I didn't see it that way. Um, I think it was definitely a really good um, build-up to be able to see Neville going one-on-one -on -one with this now. I mean, Ziggler is a seasoned veteran at this point, um, but you can't really have, you know, you couldn't have Ziggler lose. Um, sorry, with him being in the IC run and everything like that, but it was, I think it, it worked for both superstars involved. After the match, um, Sheamus came out and attacked uh, Dolph Ziggler, um, you know, kind of building up for their match at Extreme Rules, which is, um, yeah, I believe it's going to be Brian Ziggler, uh, Sheamus, and Bad News Bear in a Fatal 4-Way, which should be interesting to watch because most of those guys really do have chemistry all with each other. Um, speaking of the IC uh, Championship, um, there's a lot, been a lot of rumors going around that uh, Daniel Bryan is uh, still hurting from his injury that he had that had him out most of last year. Um, and this is only rumors, nothing's been officially announced. Uh, people are saying this because he's been pulled off of most of the UK tour, he's not having matches, and the couple that he did, um, he wasn't taking any bumps, uh, he was mostly, he was in tag team matches so it was mostly protected by the other guy. Uh, the other guy was in the ring more. Um, this could be true, um, but I don't think that they would have him as the IC champion if he was still hurting that bad. I think they're just trying to keep him um, kind of fresh uh, for their match. Um, they don't want, because he did just come back from injury. I think they're just trying to make sure he is 100%. I don't think he, we're going to see him, you know, gone again. Um, and then the end of the show, we had a promo between Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth Rollins is showing just even more. He's showing how great of a heel he is. He came out there and he was sitting in a reclining chair as he was talking to Randy Orton, you know, being all nonchalant and you know, oh, well, I'm, I'm the best, blah blah blah. Um, and he told Randy Orton that. 
at their match Extreme Rules, the RKO is banned. If Randy uses the RKO, he'll lose the match. Uh, Randy Orton countered this. He's like, that's fine, um, but the match is going to be in a steel cage, uh, which is cool. Um, you know, we don't see many steel cage matches like that for the belt anymore. Um, so I think this will be really interesting to see how you know they kind of do in that environment, which I think should be great. Um, at this point, Randy Orton flipped the recliner that Seth Rollins was in. Um, he escaped, and then Randy Orton attacked J and J and RKO'd them to uh, close out the show. Um, a decent Raw. They definitely used their time well again. There was a lot more matches and action, rather, you know, backstage and interviews and all that jazz. Um, I mean, if they could keep using their three hours like this, um, you know, it, I, I would enjoy that so much more than seeing, you know, Triple H and Stephanie four times a night in the back talking about Randy Orton or whoever. Um, I just, at this point, you know, it seems like the, they're too focused on story rather than wrestling. And Raw showed that they could really balance it, and it was really nice. Um, tonight's SmackDown, so tomorrow, keep an eye out for my review of that. Um, and then hopefully here soon I should have another um, extra video, as I like to call it, or special video. Uh, so keep an eye out for that too. Um, like, comment, subscribe, you know, leave your thoughts down below. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Um, and I will see you tomorrow for my review of SmackDown. Thanks.